The Brazilian Grand Prix is over and Max Verstappen wins yet another race. But behind Max, it was a great race with tyre strategies affecting the race and we also saw a thrilling battle between Alonso and Perez. But what did we learn? Well, I'm going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from the Brazilian Grand Prix. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'm going to be talking about Aston Martin, McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. The Brazilian Grand Prix was a race that saw the teams and drivers being tested due to high tyre wear, and with it being a sprint weekend, the teams only had one hour to get their setup right. And some teams did get it right, but some teams really did not get set up right. Due to an early red flag after a huge incident between Albon and Magnussen, we saw that the teams were able to change their tyres during the red flag. Because of this, we saw the majority technically do a three-stop strategy, but it was very much a two-stop race, and we saw 50 pit stops altogether. That is, of course, including the red flag period where the drivers changed their tyres. Funnily enough, everything that we saw in the sprint, we also saw in the main Grand Prix. Aston Martin had strong pace, Alfa Tauri had a very good race as well, Ferrari were alright and Norris and Verstappen were a long way clear of the rest. Also, Mercedes pace from the sprint race translated into the same pace in the main Grand Prix and this for me highlights the issue with sprint race weekends. We basically saw the same race twice, just one was a lot longer than the other. That being said, thankfully with Brazil the racing is always good and there was plenty of on-track overtakes even if race direction managed to miss the majority of them. The fastest lap in the Grand Prix was a 112.486 and that was set by Lando Norris in the McLaren. It was over 1.3 seconds faster than last year's fastest lap, mainly due to Norris stopping late for a final set of soft tyres. So the question is, what teams had a good race and what teams did not have a good race at Intel Argos? Well, one team in the midfield which had a bad race was Williams, as Alex Albon's race came to an end before it could even get underway, and his teammate Logan Sargent finished the race in 11th place. Williams were a little lucky this weekend that Daniel Ricciardo was caught up in the incident between Albon and Magnussen because Ricciardo did have very strong pace and could have scored some much needed points for Alfa Tauri. To show how poor the pace was from Sargent in the Williams, I brought up the times of Ricciardo and Logan. Apologies that they are similar colours but I can't really do anything about that. When you look at this, it becomes very clear that Ricciardo had a massive pace advantage in the Alfa Tauri. For Williams, they are very fortunate that Ricardo went to lap down because of the crash. Williams are now only 7 points ahead of Alfa Tauri in the team standings, and if Ricardo was not in that incident, then it very easily could have come down to 5 points, or maybe even less in my opinion. Alfa Tauri did have a very strong race this weekend, however due to Ricardo getting caught up in an incident, I'm not really going to talk about them for having strong pace. Instead, I am going to talk about Alpine as they also had a good race, at least with Pierre Gasly. Alpine opted to split the strategies in this race. Ocon went for a three-stop strategy and that did not work out, but his teammate Gasly did a two-stop and had brilliant pace. When you compare the times of the two drivers, you can see their pace levels is actually very similar, which is not a good thing for Ocon. Due to him having to do an extra stop, he automatically loses 20 seconds, and he, you can see, he doesn't really make up for it. Gasly, however, did have brilliant pace and a very good race, and he actually had better pace than the Mercedes. How much better, you ask? Well, when you look at the times here between Hamilton and Gasly, you can see that Gasly is all over Hamilton. Alpine got the strategy right with Gasly and the setup right for him as well. And you can see here how it paid dividends for him. Even when Hamilton moved onto the fresh soft tyres towards the end of the race, he could not match the pace of the Alpine driver, which goes to show just how strong Alpine were this weekend. Alpine are very much safe now for 6th place in the Constructors' Championship. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, then I would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs, and I would really appreciate it if you helped me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams, starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, for the first time in what feels like a very long time, I don't have to say how they've just fallen further back. Aston Martin had a fantastic weekend, and this was the first time in a long time that it felt like they were the Aston Martin of old. 
Both Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll had strong races, as Stroll finished in 5th place, and Fernando Alonso just pipped Sergio Perez to the line to finish on the podium, which I think shocked a lot of people. But the pace was real for Alonso, and he put on a defensive masterclass, because Perez was quite a bit faster. And to show that, I have the times of Alonso and Perez. Perez initially caught Alonso during the medium tyre phase, but Alonso forced Perez to overwork his tyres, which is why Alonso was able to start lapping several tenths faster towards the end of the medium tyre stint. But when Perez stops for the soft tyres, you can see that initially he has somewhat of a big edge over Alonso, and things are looking good for Perez, right up until he reaches the Great Wall of Fernando. Alonso put on a masterclass in the art of defending. Interlagos is one of the easiest circuits for overtaking on the calendar, but Alonso made it more difficult for Perez. He made it one of the most difficult circuits. And when you look at this lap, you can see just how hard Alonso had to fight. There is a massive deficit in straight line speed, but he was still able to hold off Checo. Here, Perez has over 30 km per hour speed advantage and still cannot overtake. For Aston Martin, they feel confident going forward. Me though, I am still a little bit sceptical, but it was fantastic to see them on form this weekend. For McLaren, the Brazilian Grand Prix was a tale of two halves, as Lando Norris was able to take the fight to Max Verstappen for somewhat of a while anyway, but his teammate Oscar Piastri had a shocker, as much like Daniel Ricciardo, he was forced to race a lap down on the rest. Lando, however, had another incredible performance. But, as we've seen all too often this year, as you can see when you compare Norris to Verstappen, the relentless pace of Verstappen is just too much. Things start off close, but on the mediums, as the stint wears on, the McLaren of Norris just starts to lose pace when compared to Verstappen, as the tyre wear of the Red Bull allows Max to push harder for longer. For McLaren though, this is incredible, and it's another indication that McLaren could very well be the team to take the fight to Red Bull next year. They're getting closer and closer with each race, and next year, they may just be there with the Red Bull team. For Ferrari, the Brazilian Grand Prix was not a good race at all. Carlos Sainz didn't have great pace, and for his teammate Charles Leclerc, the race was over before it could even begin, as a power unit issue sent Leclerc into the wall and out of the race on the formation lap. For Sainz though, pace, like I said, was really not that great. He was faster than the Mercedes, which is important for Ferrari, but I feel like this was a missed opportunity. They should have really closed into Mercedes this weekend, but instead they only gained a few points. It looks like when you compare Stroll and Sainz times, that Ferrari was stronger on the medium tyres, but on the soft tyres they just worked them too hard. Going into the next race at Las Vegas, they can be confident that they will be strong, but I have a feeling Charles Leclerc may be starting further down with a power unit penalty after what happened in Brazil. And from there, they will definitely have their work cut out for them if they are to catch Mercedes before the end of the year. For Mercedes, their love-hate relationship with the W14 continues. Back in Texas, they loved the car and thought the upgrade was a major step forward. But just two races later, they are saying how they can't wait to get rid of this car because the Brazilian Grand Prix was a disaster. George Russell retired from the race, and Lewis Hamilton had horrendous pace. But how bad was it? Well, we already compared his pace to that of Pierre Gasly, but what about the drivers he should have been fighting? Well, when you look at the times of Norris, Hamilton, and Carlos Sainz, you can see that Hamilton was just lacking pace. The Mercedes generally did not work this weekend. I believe they got the setup completely wrong, but this goes to show once again just how the Mercedes is struggling. One race they have great pace, and the next race they are floundering. They have a very small window with their setup, and it seems to be very, very difficult for them to get it right. This weekend, it was another weekend of them floundering. And with Vegas next, I imagine they're going to struggle once again, due to the amount of straights at the Las Vegas circuit, and also it just doesn't look like a circuit that will suit the Mercedes car. And finally for Red Bull, this was a tough test for Verstappen. He had brilliant pace, but Lando in the McLaren pushed him pretty much all the way this weekend, and it was a sign that Red Bull still have an edge, but the competition are slowly closing in. 
Teammate Perez was unfortunate to just be pipped to the line. We've already seen the pace of both against their closest rivals from the race, and next time in Las Vegas, it will be interesting to see if they can fire up the tyres in the cold weather, given how kind they are when it comes to Pirelli rubber. If they can't fire them up, then qualifying could be a struggle for the Red Bull team, but of course I do expect them to make up for it in the Grand Prix when they do get the tyres up to temperature. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.